Have you ever wondered if Dyson's air purifiers were worth it? I had the same question, so when the folks at Drio reached out and asked us to review their new air purifying fan, I thought what better way to do it than to compare it to a much more expensive Dyson unit. I think most people would consider Dyson to be a leader in this space, so today I'm going to break down the differences between those two, and we're going to find out just who is worth it when it comes to protecting you and your family from poor air quality. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and my goal here on the channel is to save you time and definitely money on your journey to live smarter. So if you like that idea, hit the subscribe button now. I have to thank the folks over at Drio who sponsored today's video for the launch of their new MC710S purifier and fan. It's folks like the team at Drio who make it possible for us to produce videos on YouTube. We're very clear with them that it doesn't mean they're getting a good review. So in today's video where they have improvements to make, we're gonna point them out. In fact, you can see all of our test results in a spreadsheet that we created so you could see all the differences. I won't talk about every little nuance today, but you can download that at the link in the description and follow along, see why we're saying the things we are. And you'll see what kinds of tools we use too and how we standardized our tests so that we could tell you who won and who lost. Now let's start with a breakdown of those two products. This is the Drio Purifier Fan MC710S. It's got a price tag of about $300. Now it's 46.5 inches tall, 9.5 inches in diameter, and weighs 17.6 pounds. It's a purifier and a fan with two separate motors allowing you to control each one of those on their own. It features a HEPA H13 filter, that has only lost a single percent since I started with it after running it well over two days at full speed. The filter is at the bottom of the device and the air quality sensor does temperature and PM 2.5. Now that sensor is at the top and the back. You can remove those back pieces to clean out the device, whether it's the air quality sensor or the fan itself. Now the fan can pump out an impressive 1,220 feet per minute of airflow at maximum. That's what we measured with our tools. And while that's not volume, it's a significant amount of air. The fan can be rotated 120 degrees and it's completely silent when it's oscillating. Now the LED display can show four different measurements and the top touch panel can control the device along with the IR remote and the app. Everything can go off based on settings in the app and you can child lock all of the controls. It connects to Google Home and Amazon and I managed to get it into a home bridge in order to gain some control in Homey, HomeKit, and potentially others for yourself. The Dyson Purifier Cool TP07 is $600, although Dyson officially sells it for 650 US on their site. It's almost 42 inches tall, just over eight inches in diameter and weighs 10.5 pounds. So it's a little smaller than Drio. It's a purifier and a fan, but with only one motor, you'll have to use both of those together. It features a HEPA H13 filter that actually comes in two components. Now it's maximum recommended time is 12 months and it's $80 US, but you can find aftermarket ones for cheaper. The filter is at the bottom of the unit as well as the air quality sensor. Now that air quality sensor does a ton. It does PM 2.5, PM 10, VOC, NO2, as well as temperature and humidity. But with its location at the bottom of the unit, I have some concerns about that air quality sensor that I'll share in a bit. Now the fan, it doesn't put out a ton of air, even at maximum speeds. However, it can push out air out of the front or the sides and the oscillation can be in 350 degrees. The LED display shows an actual moving graph unless you use night mode and there's a single push button on the device but you can also use the IR remote, the app, Google, Amazon and again I managed to get this into HomeBridge for Homey, HomeKit and some other 
app control. Now let's get into the results of our testing. That's what really matters when we talk about a cost comparison. You can check out the specifics in our spreadsheet, but here's what I felt the need to point out to you. The truth is, it's just a few big differences and surprisingly, they don't all point to Dyson being the superior product. I did a comparison of the power usage versus the amount of airflow and then combine that with the amount of noise. Now, Dyson has a lot of marketing material around the efficiency and the expertise that they have in motors. As an engineer who used to deal with a large range of motors, I can tell you I wasn't that impressed. The fact is, Drio produced significantly more airflow at a lower level of noise and with better power efficiency. I won't get into why, because I didn't rip the things apart to find out exactly, but the measurements say that Drio gives you more airflow if you want it and less noise because you always want that alongside a power bill that doesn't necessarily hit as hard. If you want an actual fan, there is no comparison. In foot per minute measurements, Drio's outputs were double that of Dyson. And while those measurements aren't volume and therefore aren't exact, and the further I got away from these fans, the more I felt the difference. Drio's fan reaches across our larger rooms with ease, while Dyson falls off fast and you don't feel it. On the air quality side, I, I really, like really, over fried some bacon a couple of times in my home. I sprayed around all these terrible aerosols and tested out those air quality sensors and their cleaning features with the air purifier. Now both air purifiers recognized and cleared the resulting messes in very similar times. Really, these purifiers use similar HEPA H13 filters with uh, a carbon component inside of the Dyson. Now that is a difference in terms of what it can clear, and that's important to note. But I have other air quality sensors in my home, and I can tell you that both were cleaning out any VOCs in the air. And the minor differences in technology don't result in differences for cleaning your air, at least as far as I saw. Now the oscillation feature with Dyson is obviously much better because it can go almost all the way around. And when that's combined with the fact that you can use this side airflow option, it means that Dyson can really get the air going in any direction. Drill allows 120 degrees of movement, but I think that's gonna be enough for most people in most situations. The biggest thing you gotta watch for with this is if you wanted to go 180 degrees because you're gonna place it near a flat wall and not in a corner. So while I was doing all these different tests with other air quality monitors, with other air purifiers, with testing units like this wind speed measurement tool, my sound level meter and my power monitor, I couldn't find anything that would matter to you in terms of performance. And I couldn't find anything that would justify a $300 cost differential. I've been doing this long enough now to know that you guys are looking for some pretty specific things and the design differences that have been packed into these two will really drive your decision. Some of these actually could be worth the differential. Now, obviously, I mean, you can see it back there. Dyson's a smaller unit, and I will say the design there can fade into the background. A lot of people will want to place an air purifier in their bedroom, and both of these are really well suited to that. There's just a difference in the way it's handled, but I'll tell you that Drio automatically recognizes the light levels in your room, and they will turn off both the panel and the touch screen on top of the unit. So with Dyson, you'll need to schedule night mode, or you'll need to go into the app, or use this remote. It's kind of a weird experience that way. Uh, otherwise you have that little LED display on, but it's manageable. And I've spoken about the fact that Drio has split out the motors for the fan and the purifying feature. What this means is you turn on this breeze mode or you just turn off the fan manually and then it continues to purify the air in your home. You'll feel a little breeze and yes, it's exactly as it's described. But what that results in is the number of moments where you're gonna be happier with Drio. I know for myself, I don't want the fan all the time. 
At night, some people like the noise with a fan, and so it'll be just fine that you don't have that choice with Dyson. I did really enjoy the fact that I could purify the air in our bedroom without the fan running which is something you can't do with Dyson. Initially, when I compared the two air quality sensors, I thought this was a big win for Dyson. It's obviously able to detect a lot of additional things, and that is important. I do love having the VOC sensor, and I do love that the Dyson responds to that aggressively, like it really cleans out the air. Now, as I show you the next demo, we're going to explore how some of the design decisions behind these sensors really affect how the sensor works. Now, I've sprayed this cloth with a cleaner. It's not a terrible one. It doesn't have a lot of VOCs. But watch what happens to Dyson's unit when I rub anywhere near the sensor. It's reacting pretty aggressively. Not really aggressive, and it's already taken most of the pollutant out of the air. Now, I've done this test a number of times, and I can tell you that although the sensor tracks a little bit lower than some of the other air quality sensors in my home, uh, it actually reacts very aggressively to whatever's going on in your home, whatever pollutants are there. That would seem like a good thing. Now it usually stays running at this pace for about five to 10 minutes. And while you would think that's not a terrible choice, it's now running a lot more air through your filter. So doing it in this way is going to wear out that filter. You're gonna to have to buy new ones. It's also a pretty exposed sensor. Now let me show you the difference between this and what Drio has done. So. When I do this same thing to drill, watch the sensor. Okay, we have good recognition that there's an air quality issue in the room. And obviously it's kicked on the air purifying mode, but you'll notice the fan's not on. It's not driving a ton of air through and we're bringing it back to normal almost immediately. So not only do you not hear the fan, you don't have to live with that fan for five to 10 minutes, but it's already cleared that out and we're not pumping a bunch of extra air throughout our space and having all that extra noise. What this all means to me is that if you leave the Dyson to get dirty over time or it gets sprayed with something or it's just in the general vicinity of aerosols, it's going to use that filter up quickly. It doesn't mean that Drio isn't detecting the particulate because in my testing, both of those sensors track almost exactly the same versus other detectors I had in my home. In fact, the biggest difference is that Drio tracks a little higher than Dyson does with its particulate readings. The big difference the difference here to me is the outer casing that's going to block a lot of the issues and the fact that this is located where you and I breathe. So not only can I clean the outer casing with drill, but as someone who's been in a bunch of industrial facilities where we had air quality sensors meant to protect our lives, they always place those sensors near where you breathe. That's kind of what matters, right? Maybe you want to think about Rover down on the ground and maybe that's why you'd like to buy the Dyson, but I think it's kind of stupid to have the air quality sensor near your feet. I also think the fact that they really overshoot how much they clean the air is based on that. They're cleaning extra time uh, because they're getting a measurement far away from your mouth and nose. So they're making sure that the air where you're actually breathing it is clean. Because we're on Automate Your Life, I'm obviously going to talk about connectivity options. It was surprising to me to see that the connectivity options were essentially the same. And the only difference I really found in the two purifiers is that you get a few more options with Drio when you were someone using Amazon's voice assistant. Let me show you what is definitely the best control for your air purifiers. 
This is with Amazon's new Echo Hub. And then we'll talk a little bit about other integrations. So we're here on Amazon's Echo Hub. And I can tell you that this control for both of these units is pretty good. So we're just turning on and off both of these units. You can do it here just with quick taps and it's making the adjustments on the device. You could probably hear it. Now I can hit the three dots. And I get, again, that same power control, but I get a lot more with Drio's tower. So I do get the air quality sensor reading out of it. I can make adjustments to where it's pointed in the room. I can adjust fan speed if I'd like. I can really get that moving. And even if I want the panel sounds, I can make those changes. There's this great oscillation that we can turn on and I can change that range down here. I can also change the mode that it's in. So if I don't want the fan at all, I turn on that breeze or the sleep mode, which can really bring down the fan over time. That's what sleep mode does. There's also the auto purification and the ability to even control the display. Now, when I switch over to the Dyson cool fan, I get just a few less options. So I can turn it on and off. I have my fan speed adjustment. I have that night mode toggle so I can turn off the display. I have the auto oscillation and I can go with these different modes for oscillation. So I believe that's 45 degrees, maybe 120, 180, 350, something like that. Uh, you'd be able to play with those, test them out, but there's just a few less controls with this. In terms of control inside of Amazon's app, Google's app and other options for automating within your home, I did get both of these connected to a home bridge in my home and therefore controllable through Apple HomeKit in a minor way, uh, a Home Assistant Homey as well. And so those kinds of things work. They're not amazing right now. Both of these companies have to improve those situations. But if you want to see all the details, that's in our spreadsheet. So go check that out. It's pretty clear where my head is at when it comes to these two purifiers. I don't think the extra value is there when it comes to the extra cost with Dyson. I think you're paying for the look and I think you're paying for the brand. And I don't think that's making sense to many people anymore. I've been using another Drio air purifier right behind the camera for a while now. And I just now need my first filter replacement after well over a year. Every other device I have from them has been fantastic and I'm still using them. So this is just gonna be another device on the list of products from them that I will continue to use. I think I will probably give away the Dyson. It doesn't split out that fan and purifier component enough for me. I don't find it that nice to really look at, although I do prefer the look to Drio from an overall perspective. It's just not enough to make it make sense to me. Now, if you'd like to purchase either of these two devices, their links are in the description below. Of course, there's also the link to our spreadsheet so you can get the full details there and make an educated decision. Now, you'll wanna watch some of our other comparison videos. If you're looking for other smart appliances or smart products in your home, that playlist is up on screen there. You can check out our most recent video doorbell comparison. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, live smart.